Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to us, guys, thank you very much for spending a couple of moments uh, with us. Only thing I ask, if you could be so kind and take a second out, uh, click a like. It will support the channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll continue uh, to hopefully put my um, unbiased view into kind of focus. So let's talk about it. So you're probably wondering, what the hell is McDonald's doing on my screen, right? Um, I, I don't think I've had a McDonald's probably in the last 20 years. Just one of those things. I just haven't had it. I figure, look, if I want a burger, I'll go to a really good burger place. I'd rather spend, yeah, $10, 12 $14 for you know, a really good burger they go to McDonald's buying something for, I don't know how much burgers all these days from a Big Mac for four or five bucks. Because I always wonder, especially when I was younger, you know, how can they be selling a Big Mac for $2.50? I don't get it. You know, so you have the meat, the meat, technically, right? You have the meat, lettuce, tomato, buns, secret sauce, which is not so secret, mayonnaise and Thousand Island dressing. How could all that be for $2.50? Well, the reason why I bring that up is if you look at, and again, nobody's going to be, uh, you know, nobody's going to be the champion for McDonald's, but if you look at the performance of the stock, you say to yourself, my goodness, man, the, the market is really, the consumer is really supporting McDonald's. It looks absolutely great until you read this news. So McDonald's this afternoon are, are falling, right? Are falling really, really badly. Uh, because apparently the CDC is, says there's an E. coli outbreak in the quarter pounders. So realistically, I haven't had McDonald's in 20 years. I probably won't have it anytime soon. So guys, if you are uh, if you are enjoying the McDonald's meat or burgers, just be very very careful. It's about it's about safety and um, you know your your health. So be very very careful. Other than that, let's talk about the real. Uh, McCoy here, the market continues to be uh, very, very good, continuing to grind. Uh, as we talk about all the time, there is a constant rotation, uh, especially in the um, uh, technology shares. When you go, you know, you go from cloud computing names, then you go from semiconductors, then you go from this and you go from that. Uh, even the wheat, some of these wheat stocks woke up this morning. Uh, you saw some aviation stocks wake up this morning. Um, so you have a really, really good market. But the, what, what I really like what I saw today was the rotation back into the majority of the names in the Magnificent Seven, right? So with the Magnificent Seven are Meta, Google, uh, Amazon, uh, NVIDIA, Apple, right? That, that whole crew. Uh, so it was a very, very bullish take. Uh, what I don't like, what I continue to see is it feels like the rest of the market that is not participating, right? Or kind of in a standstill. I feel they're very lackluster, right? You can go through a lot of groups and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But for, for tech space, right? From the tech names, I do like uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, let's go through a couple of names, right? This is kind of what I, uh, I want to give you guys an example. Like Amazon today, uh, this is now the highest close in this whole formation here. It doesn't feel like it had a big, big move today. It actually did. Uh, it, it actually did towards the middle of the day. It had a you know, pretty big run here, 190.50s uh, until the market got pulled. But again, it's the options market that woke this thing up. We saw 190 weeklies, 192.50 weeklies, some 200 calls uh, coming in. Look at a name like Google, for example. Again, it's not going to stand out. And again, it, it's maybe the, one of those things that you have to have me a little bit of a trained eye for. But, you know, Google came out of this three day range and we started seeing 65, 67, 170 calls come in. Again, maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing, but it's something you want to manage because considering how dead these stocks have been uh, in the last couple of weeks. A name like Meta, for example, right? Meta had a humongous run, had an absolutely humongous run. Then the stock kind of settled in, right? Kind of settled in for the last three, four weeks. First green candle, right? First green candle today. If it gets above the 10-day moving average in the next couple of days, this thing could start firing back up 
uh, to 52 week highs. Again, th- these are all clues. It doesn't make it, you know, it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't have to translate automatically. These things are, are going to happen, but you like to see these things wake up, especially when the market is resting. If you look at the NASDAQ today, NASDAQ was up 33 points primarily on a couple of names. And the reason why I say that, look at Microsoft today. Absolute rocket right out of the bottom of the range. This is what we continue to dwell upon. Watch the bottom of the range in place. Watch the bottom of the range because when they get back, above their cycle, above the range, they could start waking up. So when you see a name like Microsoft coming out of the range, it's going to take up the rest of the names. That's the very, very important part of this business. It's a copycat business. If one beta name is strong, they're all probably going to go strong. Look at Apple. Apple's had a, a really, really great run in the last couple of days, had a kind of a, a little bit of profit taking today, held the 10-day moving average. Look how close Apple is to breaking 52-week highs. We're like a day, day and a half away for a potential run back to 52-week highs. Last time we spoke, there was no video last night. I had to uh, take my son. He had, he had a physical therapy for his hamstring. Uh, but, you know, NVIDIA, last time we spoke was uh, a couple of days ago, right, uh, on the weekend video. And I said, hey, this thing probably is going to ta- attack the 52-week highs. That's exactly what happened. Yesterday, it got back above the 141 level, confirmed uh, the June 20th highs, stock traded all the way up today uh, into the 144s, continues to act really, really well. Considering, look at the big move we had. The stock was down 14 cents of the day. So it continues to act uh, really, really well. Does that mean all the sem- semiconductors are acting well? Absolutely not. And SMCI today, there was a nice pivot today below $47. SMCI was a, is a perfect example. If you guys remember, for the last three, four days, they've been pumping. I'm talking about pumping deep out of the money calls on this thing. The 50, 51, 52s. If you guys remember last week, all those calls expired. Yesterday, again, we started seeing 52, 53 week calls. And you're saying, well, what the hell is going on? And you see all these weekly calls coming in, but the stock is not going higher. Matter of fact, not only the stock is going higher, now it's sitting on a four day consolidation and they were defending the $47 level. That was the pivot. The stock took out the $47 level, traded all the way down to 44.80 today. Now, why is this important? Well, that's the other side of the spectrum. Today, we started seeing some 42 weeklies, some 42.50 weeklies. Again, there's a lot of whirlwind, you know, there's a lot of whirlwind rumors going on with the stock. They still haven't uh, filed their 10K. Are they going to pre-announce? Are they going to give some guidance? You know, we don't know any of this stuff, but this is why we always talk about be ready on both sides. Now, watch this SMCI for tomorrow, right? If this thing starts losing today's channel and starts taking this whole channel down and starts taking out the October lows, this thing has more room to the downside. Look at AMD, for example, right? AMD has had a horrific time ever since it kind of put in this blow off top in early October. Today, you had some news that directly affected AMD. If there's something positive for NVIDIA, guess what? It's going to be negative for AMD. They sold AMD very, very aggressively today at one point losing the 50-day moving average. Guys, watch what happens if AMD confirms today's channel tomorrow. This thing could get really, really hit. So, you know, definitely keep an eye on this thing. Again, we always want to be prepared on both sides of the market. Uh, let me give you guys some some names I like for tomorrow, right? Some 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 tomorrow as well. Uh, look at Robinhood, right? Look at a name like Robinhood. We saw some $28, $30 calls uh, coming in, it's coming out of a tight, tight channel here. Let's see, let's see if there's more action uh, coming in on this thing on the upside uh, for tomorrow. Microsoft, right? Love Microsoft. Microsoft, you see here, got rejected off the supply. But if this thing starts confirming the supply in the next couple of days, this thing could wake up as well. So it's very, very important to understand uh, your levels. The big one going into tomorrow, and this thing has been, talk about a stock, dead money, uh, ever since the robo-taxi event, is Tesla, right? Tesla now, since the event, has literally gone sideways for the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sessions. Tomorrow will be session number nine. Um, I don't expect anything to happen with this thing uh, tomorrow until in the regular session, until it comes out with earnings tomorrow uh, after the close. Honestly, we really haven't seen any big bets in the options market one way or another. It's kind of odd. Um, there is definitely a two-sided trade setting up for tomorrow after hours. And obviously for all you guys uh, in the webinar, we'll discuss this tomorrow. But we have a downside channel here. We have an upside channel here. And depending how the stock uh, reacts to earnings tomorrow, well, we'll get some value on one of these channels or next. But overall, the market continues to act very, very well. 
Uh, I am not naive. I understand at any point you can get a rock pull. Uh, that's the whole point of trading. They want to get you comfortable. They want you to get you complacent. They want you to get lethargic. They want you to put on the visors, right? But then nothing wrong will ever happen. And then they pull the plug. So this is why we always try to reiterate the point. Stay away from the stocks that have massive, massive moves. Stick to the stocks that are just coming out of the bottom channels. That's your best bet. This is where Microsoft exploded today, right? Off the bottom channel here. This is where Amazon, right, is getting above. This whole bottom channel here. It's waking up here. That was the whole point of Apple, right? That was the whole point of Apple. It got up above the bottom channel and now it's making its ways. NVIDIA got above the bottom channel here, right, above the five-day moving average all the way on October the 1st, and now the stock is 25 points higher. So that's the theme, folks. That's the theme. Uh, that's exactly what I will look for. Um, I do, I am definitely watching SMCI tomorrow. If there is any type of weakness, I'm definitely watching AMD tomorrow for any type of weakness. And the most important part is put yourself in a position that you are ready for both sides. You're watching the options market. You're letting institutional money flow uh, continue to kind of dictate which way the market's going to go and be open to both sides of the market. If you're locked into a stock and you fall in love with the stock, eventually the stock is going to hurt your feelings because again, stocks all go straight up, stocks don't go straight down. They don't care how good of a person you are. If a stock is broken, it's broken. If the stock is strong, it doesn't need a reason why it's strong. Again, it's just stocks are taking out supply in a rapid bull market and that's exactly what it is. So going into tomorrow, guys, I am definitely preparing on both sides. Some semis look strong, some semis look weak. Continue to buy NVIDIA on rising daily support. Not at the 60 minute anymore, rising daily support. We had, we had a beautiful bounce today on NVIDIA uh, into rising 60, but now it's getting a little bit, a little bit long in the tooth. Can it get a, can it go higher? Of course. But again, the value now is buying dips into rising daily channels. Guys, God bless. Let's see exactly what we have tomorrow with Tesla after the close. And with God's help, I will see you on the field. Uh, my Take care, guys. Have a great night.